So in the beginning right you see a chord symbol like a C major 7 and you have two or three shapes that you can play. Very often we're playing shapes that have the root on the E string or the A string and that's our starting point and there's nothing wrong with it. But there are so many other chords out there, right? Some of them are easy to play, <laughs> other ones are not so easy to play, some are very clear and some are not so clear where we can use them. So it's a lot of stuff but it's also a lot of fun to explore those sounds and today I want to give you like three steps how you can work on your chords. So the first step is to sort of have a chord journal which is really nice. So basically you get yourself a journal and you build different categories for the chords that you want to learn like major 7, dominant 7, minor 7, half diminished. So let's say we start with the major 7 chord. So we would just collect, let's say, for C major all the voicings that we know. And first of all, we're going to get rid of the root so we have more liberty. We can record ourselves a root on the looper. And as a next step, we think about all the chords that we know that have a C major sound. We can play this one, maybe this one. depends on the chords that you know and sort of we're all organizing them. The chapter is C major 7 chord, right? And we're all just checking them out. And then we can sort of build orders with the chord shapes that we already have and maybe sing the top note. So already Just experimenting. And maybe playing those older chords that we know in between. So we can connect the old stuff with the new stuff. So we have a lot of sounds now, but now I really want to get down to practicing accompanying someone. And for that we're going to go back to the simplest chords, maybe shell voicings. And it's more important that the chord work, works and that your playing in time is the most important thing when you're accompanying somebody, also when you're practicing comping. So I put the metronome on. 52, I'm playing a 1625, but you can really use this exercise on any song. Just two, three, four. And I just do that a couple of times. I'm playing on the one letting the notes ring out. If I'm more advanced, I can play different voicings every time, but for the moment, I can stick to the same chords and just concentrate on your time. And now I'm going to play the same chord and the same chord shape on the one and the four. One, two, Three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. I'm picking the chord at the moment, but I could also strum them. That's a good exercise. It's good if you can do both. And I'm just playing a couple of choruses of the tune that I want to learn. And then I can, instead of just playing the same chord on the four, I'm going to play a chromatic approach to the next chord. So the first chord is C major, the next chord is A7. So I'm going to play a B flat 7, which is a half note higher. 
on the four and above the C major seven, like one, two, three, chromatic approach, A7, thinking about the next chord, the D minor seven, going to approach it from above, E flat minor, right? So without counting, it would be like, um, Basically, I'm shifting into each chord chromatically from above. Let, let me demonstrate. Two, three, four, one. them short now. Two, three, four, two, three. So th these are my three steps, right? Playing it on the one, playing the same chord on the one and the four, playing another chord on the four that leads in to the next chord. My metronome has been on 52 quarter notes, right? So now I'm keeping the same tempo, starting the entire exercise again, but now it's two and four. So I'm starting playing the chords on the one. One, one two, three, four. Still playing a one, six to five. I'm changing the voicings a little bit. And then I'm starting playing on the four. One, two, three. And then I'm starting with the chromatic approach. One, two, three, four, two, three. Long chords, I'm playing long chords. Now I'm playing short chords. And just one word about short and long, right? <laughs> so often neglected. If you're playing a long chord, you try to let it ring out as long as possible. That being said, it's not always maybe possible to let it ring out to the last moment. But just be sure, you know, as it's very important where a chord starts, like for example on the one, we want to be on one, but it's also very important where it ends. And so if we play like short chords, and I'm playing four, one, two, three, four, one, then, and this is supposed to be short, I'm going to end it on the two. So when I say two, one, two. So it's not ending somewhere, it's not a little bit short or a little bit longer, <laughs> but it's ending exactly in the moment the metronome is clicking two, and then it will sound good. So it's like one, two, three, four, one, two. Sorry, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Right, it's like a little package that has very clear start and ending. I like that. This is just like one idea, right? How you can play a rhythm. And there are many rhythms out there. But what is a really cool exercise if you practice the different places in a, in a bar. So if you're playing a 4-4 four, four bar, you can practice playing only on the two short and long, only on the three short and long, only on the four. And when you're playing on the four, you're anticipating the next chord. But in this way, you're training yourself to really feel the beats and you're free to play wherever you want. So I'm going to play on the one in one bar and on the two in the next one. That's sort of a variation. One. Two, three, four. Two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one. Two, three, four. Long. One. Three, four. Long. Short. Right, so I made a PDF where you can have a look 
about all the places in a bar and how that works. So now we have like our creative journal where we can add sounds and just not forget chords that we find. And then we have our very practical comping exercise where we're really playing a song, keeping the form for ourselves without the use of a jam track. If you can do that, it will make you so much better. And the last point, and maybe the most important point, is the music theory point of it all. And that means that you know what you're doing. So in the beginning we had those shapes and we visualize those shapes. We can't change them because we don't know what we can change. So I urge you to start to understand what a chord is and how it is built and sometimes it's really easier if you have like a piano you can also buy like a really cheap keyboard right and then you can for example investigate the C major 7 chord on the piano it's super easy to understand it's C E G B right we're stacking thirds upon each other then we have a C major 7 chord with four notes on the guitar, we don't always have the same order. If you start by knowing which notes are in a chord, you will have a big advantage for understanding what is happening on your fretboard. So basically, if you're having a C major 7 chord, you write down the notes, C, E, G, B, and then you play your voices or your voicings. And then here I have C, B, E, G, right? I have all the notes that I need, but in another order. And that's how I start. And then sometimes I might find a note that's not in those four chords, right? And then can I make mention note and try to understand what it is, this D. C, D is on the second degree in C major, it's a nine, right? It's a color note. And then you can also start to understand after a while that you don't always have to think about a C major um, shape to have a C major chord, but you could also think about an E minor 7 chord or A minor 7 chord shape. For example, this would be like an A minor 7, right? But now I have the C. And that becomes a C6 chord. And there are many tricks how you can use shapes, not only in their original way, like you understand them, but you can use them in different ways, right? But for a start, start just with like the one, three, five, seven chords, maybe the drop two voicings and play the chords, say the name of the notes and say the intervals. And if it's only one chord voicing per day, per day, but so you know what you're doing. So I see you next week. Bye.